Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So DJI just dropped the Mavic 3 and we're all talking about it. But it seems like there was one feature that no one was really able to test. For a lot of features that I didn't get to try out because those will be coming in January via a new firmware update. Focus track with the new Active Track 5.0. A lot of the fancy features we don't actually have yet on this firmware. And the new Active Track 5.0, which is supposed to be really good. Now, if you guys can keep this secret between us, we kind of sort of got early access. So today, we're talking about Active Track 5.0 on the DJI Mavic 3. Okay, so I do want to preface this video by saying that this is a beta firmware version of Active Track 5.0. So whatever you guys see today is not final. There's still a few improvements and a few kinks to work out on DJI's end. But hopefully whenever the firmware, the full firmware comes out in what we're expecting to be January of 2022 for Active Track 5.0, it's going to be pretty damn close to what you guys are going to see today on this channel. Okay, so finally, let's talk about Active Track 5.0 and the two new main features that it comes with, which upgrades it over Active Track 4.0. And that first feature is being able to trace or follow a subject from any angle. And the way that works is that you select your subject on your screen until Active Track recognizes it. And then if you select Active Track, the sort of D pad menu will pop up where you're able to select any direction you want. And that's the direction that the drone will follow you from. So it opens up the opportunity to get a lot of new dynamic shots from a lot of different angles that were not possible before. And the second upgrade in Active Track 5.0 is the distance at which this tracing can take place. So previously on the DJI Air 2 S and any other drone that has Active Track 4.0, there was sort of a limited distance and a limited range where you could follow a subject from using Active Track. This range has now been extended significantly. Now, obviously, I can talk about this all day, but I want to show you guys what we discovered through our own testing of Active Track 5.0, and we're going to go through a few scenarios. So let's dive into that right now. Okay, so the first scenario, we kept it rather simple. So I'm just outside here on the street, and then I've selected myself as a subject. And you'll notice that the D-pad that I spoke about previously sort of appears on the screen. So this is where you're able to select what angle you want the drone to follow you from. So once I have my angle selected, I just casually kind of start walking and I am around a bunch of trees. And so this was done on purpose so I could sort of offer some sort of challenge to the drone. So it has something to avoid while it's following me. But right away, you'll notice that it is following at that angle that I've set, which is pretty cool because in the past, if you were to trace through active track, it won't really do that. Now, you saw that the drone lost me right there and it picked me back up pretty quickly as soon as I reappeared into the frame. And you know what? That's pretty cool. Like on the previous DJI drones, I feel like if it loses you, it kind of just gives up. And right here again, it was able to kind of identifying me again right after losing me. So I thought this was a pretty good test as the drone really kept following me at the angle that I wanted to, and it was able to keep me in frame for most of the time. Okay, so next up, I wanna show you guys the distance at which Active Track 5.0 is able to pick up a subject. Okay, so right away you guys are gonna notice that I'm actually way higher than I usually would be when trying to select a subject. And the first time that I selected it, not really successful, so here I try again. And this time it's able to lock onto me. So once again, I select Active Track and I pick the direction that I wanna be traced at, I hit start, and then I start recording. So right away, you're gonna notice that it's tracing me at a much higher height than usual. And I think that's pretty damn impressive. Now for me, that's a real game changer because one of the complaints that I had about Active Track 4.0 is that if you wanted to trace or track a subject automatically, it had to be kind of close, like you weren't really able to give the drone any leeway. So this is a much welcome improvement with Active Track 5.0. Okay, now this was definitely an easy test for the drone, probably something that could have been done with Active Track 4.0 as well. Obviously, just without the angular ability or the ability to pick any angle that you want to be followed from. So we decided to test it out a little bit more thoroughly and we took it out into the wild. So what I did was that I took my car out to this road 
um, sort of found in the middle of nowhere. And I figured that would be a good place to really put Active Track 5.0 through its paces. Okay, so here I am in the middle of nowhere and I'm selecting my car. And once again, the D-pad menu pops up for me to select whatever direction I wanna pick. So I select the same direction, I start tracking. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that the drone is sort of descending. So it's getting comfortable with the height that it's at. So it started off at 60 meters and it's sort of leveling out at 50 meters and it's just climbing back. So this is already much higher, like we mentioned before, than what it usually was in the past with Active Track 4.0. So now I start driving and the drone is still kind of technically behind me and not at the angle that I've chosen, but I can see that it's working its way to that angle. And again, we'll just chalk this up to beta firmware issues, but overall, the angle is pretty close to what I want. So already, I'm really impressed and the height of these trees that it's tracking me through is also really impressive. This is something that was not possible with Active Track 4.0 in the past. And over here you notice the drone descends to kind of get more comfortable with the turn and it didn't really center me through that turn, it lost me kind of, but then it was able to pick me back up. So again, we'll just chalk this up to firmware issues. And then the other thing that I noticed, noticed after this turn was that the angle that I selected, it was not really following me at that angle anymore, it was sort of the opposite side. Now I don't know if this is an issue with me flipping the car around in terms of where I was going before, or if it's just a firmware issue, but we'll probably have to wait and see what the resolution on that will be when the full firmware comes out on Active Track 5.0. Now, there's one more thing that I noticed with the beta firmware of Active Track 5.0 is that, especially in the car version of the test, um, the actual footage that was recorded on the drone was really shaky. So, when the drone was tracking the car, it wasn't really, really smooth, right? You can see all the jitters in the footage and stuff. So, the footage is not really usable and I'll have it playing right here in the background when I'm talking about so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. But overall, I was super impressed with Active Track 5.0. Like that car test was super nerve wracking when I had the drone up in the air and I was letting it completely fly itself. That's something that I would have never done with Active Track 4.0. So obviously the side sensors on the Mavic 3 really help. So I'm very comfortable with APAS 5.0 and trusting that the drone is not gonna crash. But I was very, very impressed that the drone was able to stay locked on for that long, which makes me really excited for when DJI is going to release the full firm version of Active Track 5.0. Hopefully, like I said, that'll be in January of 2022. But once it comes out, I think this drone will be a complete beast, absolutely more than it already is. And if you guys want to learn everything that there is about this drone, um, or if you haven't already seen our review of the DJI Mavic 3, I do have that up on my channel already. And I'll link that up here somewhere for you guys to definitely check out. Now, I don't want to get too in depth with the tests because again, this is a beta firmware and it's not fair to sort of test it out on this. The whole reason we made this video is that so you guys kind of have a sneak peek of what you're expecting to get if you've bought a DJI Mavic 3 today when the full firmware version comes out. So it gives you guys something a little bit to look forward to. So just so you guys know, Active Track 5.0 definitely exists and is definitely out there and everyone will be getting it hopefully very, very soon. And that's it for this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if you learned something, as always, hit that like button smash it it really helps out the video if you guys enjoy drones photography um the brand new dji mavic 3 then definitely subscribe to the channel i would really appreciate it other than that that's all i have for this video i'll see you guys in the next one and until then keep creating